Hey guys, Seth Perkins here, one of the bearded butchers at White Feather Meats. Today, I'm gonna show you how we break down a lamb here at the shop. May not be how everybody breaks down their lamb, but this is how we do it. I was taught by an old French guy about 20 years ago this method, so we're gonna show you our style. Come on, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's go over the tools a little bit that I'm gonna be using today. This is our uh, Victorinox six inch semi-stiff knife. It has our Bearded Butcher brand logo right on there. These are available on our website. If you guys wanna go get one, make sure you check them out. We've got our steel, just a polished smooth steel and my meat hook, hand saw, teeth going forwards. And then we also, today we're gonna to use the uh, model B16 Butcher Boy band saw. I am gonna be using that just a little bit. So we've moved uh, into our commercial atmosphere. Um, Machinery is dirty, so we're gonna use it. I'm gonna show you guys. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna break this lamb, the hind quarter off. So we're gonna separate this into primals. We're gonna do the hind quarter, we're gonna do the shoulder, and then we'll do the saddle. So we're gonna break it down into three separate pieces. Um, on this hind quarter, you can feel right here is where the hip bone, um, the part of that front of that sirloin where it stops and where it meets the loin. You wanna start right there and you wanna cut all the way through just like that. Then you wanna grab your hand saw, making a very simple clean cut to pull those hind quarters off the, the rear of this lamb. So we're gonna go ahead and set that off to the side. We have the hind quarter. Now what I like to do is I like to reach up inside this lamb and I like to count four ribs. So once I've got my, my ribs, I go ahead and, and mark it with my finger, put a little knife cut there in between those ribs, cutting all the way through on one side, one, two, three, four. cutting all the way through on the other side. And then we just simply take our hand saw and we go ahead and remove the shoulder off this lamb. So now as you can see, what I have, lamb shoulder, saddle, and hind quarter. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna break down each individual section and I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the hind on this lamb first. I like to trim it up just a little bit here, pull these pieces off. And anything that I'm trimming off like this, we're gonna set over here on our trimmings table and then we, here in a little bit, we will go through it. We will cut some lamb stew uh, maybe some kebabs, and we'll trim this out for our ground lamb. So we're gonna go ahead and set that over there for a second. Now we're gonna go ahead and just break down this hind quarter. All right, now that we have these legs broke down, you can see what we did here was we cut some lamb sirloin steaks and you, if you probably noticed that I took my saw and I notched through that bone right there and that's so that I can do a little bit further trimming on these, but um, okay, let's start with these sirloin steaks. I made that notch in there with my, my saw. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean these up, make a nice presentable cut for the retail case leaving just a little bit of back fat on them, but not real heavy fat. Just clean them up like that. 
Typically I get at about an inch to an inch and a quarter thick, about four per lamb, two per side. It's usually what you can figure. Some real nice cuts there. Then the rest of this, we'll go through it. We'll um, get some stew meat out of it and some ground lamb, etc. So let's go ahead and move on to the leg of lamb. Just trim them up a little bit. Then what I like to do is I like to start with uh, the shank first, popping through that tendon right there. If you follow this seam up this shank bone right here, you can find this knuckle. Cut through that knuckle and remove your, your lamb shank just like that. Do the same thing on this side, finding that knuckle. Just cut through there. I'll take these and I'll, I'll cut the hocks off these with the bandsaw here in a second. So I'm going to show you a couple of different options that you can do with your leg of lamb. First one, I'm going to go ahead and remove this H bone out of here. Using the tip of your blade. As you can see, I have my chain mail on today. If you're gonna be cutting yourself or stabbing yourself anywhere in the midsection, it's gonna be during this process um, while you're pulling a bone like this out at waist height. So just remember, wear the right protective gear when you're doing something like this. Go ahead and just pull that H-bone out of there. Now you could leave this bone in. You can leave this as a bone in leg. Just like that, just trim it up a little bit. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bone and make a boneless leg. So I'm gonna start right here at this ball joint, moving up along the top of this top round on this lamb, turning it around, staying as close to the bone as we can, leaving the meat on the leg, not on the bone. And just go ahead and remove that. And here again, we'll do some further trimming on these bones to get them all nice and cleaned up. Now what I like to do is right here on the inside of this leg, there is a gland just like on a deer. So I like to go ahead and get rid of that. So inside this little chunk of fat right here, there is a gland. So we're gonna go ahead and just remove that piece out and discard it. So now we have a boneless leg of lamb that I'm going to roll and tie. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So I went ahead and made one leg of lamb boneless. This one, I'm gonna leave the bone in it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. You can see, real nice leg of lamb. Go ahead and remove the bone dust off of it. Make a real nice leg of lamb roast. So we have one that's a bone in option, cut in half. And this one, we're gonna go ahead and roll and tie. So I'll show you how we do that. I like to start in the middle of the leg. Keeping everything nice and tight and uniform. Pulling it tight and as you do that, moving things around just so they stay in place. And there you have it. Just a Nice, probably about a four pound boneless tied leg of lamb. Trying to keep the strings uniform, nice and tight. That way things cook evenly and it looks nice. Okay, now it's time for the lamb shoulders. We're gonna go ahead and remove the neck. We're gonna split this in half. We're gonna save some shanks. We're gonna save some neck slices and we're gonna make some shoulder chops and some roasts. So we're gonna move over to the bandsaw. Let's get started.
All right, so let's move, move back over to the table and I will show you all the different cuts off these shoulders. All right, now that we have our shoulder broke down, you can see made some real nice lamb shoulder chops. We did some neck slices, some more um, of your arm style uh, shoulder steaks, and then some shoulder roasts, and then the four shanks here. These are the hind shanks, these are the four shanks. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and continue to break this down. Starting with these uh, lamb slices, Neck slices, I like to remove this yellow cordage out of the back of these. This makes a lot better cut, more presentable. Clean them up a little bit. Make some real nice lamb stock, some stew meat. Certainly don't want to waste anything on this carcass. We're gonna use everything that we possibly can. Got the neck slices done. Gonna go ahead and finish off these shoulder steaks we have the blade steaks here now we'll go ahead and do the arm steaks just trimming them up now we're going to go ahead and move on to the shoulder now this one um, you can leave this bone in it which we typically do for a real nice bone in uh, shoulder blade roast uh, lamb roast so i'm going to go ahead and leave that one like this one today you can remove this um, bone if you wish, but today we're just going to leave it like that. This arm portion, we're going to go ahead and take these rib bones off, clean it up just a little bit. Now it's time for the rack of lamb. So we're going to go ahead and take this saddle, we're going to split it in half, and I'm going to show you guys how we do. We'll do some lamb chops and then we'll do some French rack of lamb. So check it out. You want to have eight ribs left on this rack, so count them down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just like that. So we have two eight bone lamb racks. We're gonna go ahead and chine the bone on these.
Making sure you don't get into the meat right there on that loin. Then what I like to do is take my saw blade and just make sure that that's cut in between those bones. Now it's time for the French rack. Now that we've uh, chined the bones on the back of this rack lamb, we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Take this yellow cord out. Now what I like to do is I like to take my meat hook, get underneath this membrane on these ribs and peel that membrane off. Just makes a nice, more presentable, more desirable cut in the end. Now what we do is we start right up here and you can see where this loin eye ends. So you don't want to go any further, any closer to the loin eye than this. Start up here, cutting through this soft cartilage, cutting all the way across, making a straight line, and then simply taking your knife, removing this piece, which will go into your trimmings pile. Move this little bone, soft cartilage bone here. Now I like to leave the cover on the back of these. Um, you can take this off, you can remove the silver skin. It's completely up to you. This is the way a lot of our customers like them, so that's the way we do them, leaving just a little bit of that cover and that fat on. After you've done that, now at this point, go ahead, clean down in between the bones. You wanna get these bones nice and cleaned off that way. Any meat that's left on there, if you do leave it on there, will, will turn um, a little grayish when you're cooking it. So you want a nice clean bone. That way in the end, your dish has nice white bones. So just cutting down in between each bone. Make the bones even. And there you have it. A real nice French rack of lamb. Eight bones long. Perfect for the dinner table. So let's go ahead and start with the second one. And there you have two very nice French racks of lamb. You can also take one of these, you can tie it up using some string, simply go in between each bone like this. You can tie it up, keeps everything nice and tight the cooking process. Takes a little bit more time to do but uh, definitely is worth it for an end result. As you can see when I pull these strings tight it pulls every one of these bones over real nice and straight. So there we have a rack of lamb that's tied and one that's not. So it's your own personal preference. Maybe it's your style, whatever you like. That's completely up to you. Now with these pieces right here, what you can do, these ribs that are left, you can make some lamb riblets with these. Cutting through this soft cartilage right here with my larger Victorinox knife, peel the membrane off the inside of these with your meat hook. Sometimes if you need to, you can get a hold of it with your apron. Peel that membrane off. And then just take your larger knife, cutting in between these bones. 
for your lamb riblets. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Finding that soft cartilage, pulling this membrane, and then cutting down through each bone. Just like that. Okay, so, so far um, what we've done, starting on the hind quarter, we took a leg of lamb, we cut it in half, left a bone in. We did a boneless whole tied leg of lamb. We did our sirloin chops, cut about an inch and a quarter thick. We did our loin chops, some real nice uh, loin chops there. We did two Frenched rack of lamb off that loin also. One's tied, one is not. Off the shoulder, we did one bone-in blade roast. We did one bone-in arm roast. We did arm steaks. We saved some neck slices. We did a blade steak, so we have our blade steaks and our arm steaks here off the shoulder. We have our lamb shanks from the front, lamb shanks from the hind. Then we also have some lamb riblets here, little riblets off the inside of those uh, French racks. So those are all the lamb cuts. So go ahead and uh, follow us to the boning table, and I'm going to show you how to trim out the grindings uh, or the trim for the grindings on this lamb. So check it out. Now that our lamb's all cut, we have our trimmings pile left. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through this, removing any excess fat, any um, gristle, any bone, anything like that. We're also going to be cutting some lamb stew meat. So we'll just put our trimmings into this tub and we'll just slowly work our way down through here. You can leave a, a, you know, a little bit of fat in this, but you just you definitely don't want to leave big chunks of of excess fat or anything like that as you trim this this lamb down. It helps when you're working on something like this to you know maybe have a friend or a family member or something like that come in and help you because they can be working on the trimmings pile while you're cutting the lamb. That's what we do here at the shop. But since we're doing the video today, I went ahead and moved from the actual cutting into the trimming. So we'll just work our way down through here removing these bones, gristle, and excess fat. Now you can save the bones if you'd like. That's what we're doing with this little pile over here. Um, we're gonna save those bones, make some stock, some, some lamb broth, save them for the dogs, whatever you wish. You can definitely spend you know, as much time on this as you'd like. Some people might you know, go through it and just pick every possible thing out that they they can find as far as like you know every little speck of fat main thing is remembering excess fat gristle and bone is what you want to remove one piece at a time you're working your way down through getting the bones as clean as possible and moving on to the next one okay so we went ahead and we got all of our trimmings um, into our lugger here. We're now going to dump it into our grinder. As you can see, these are real nice pieces of lamb. Not a lot of excess fat, no bone, no gristle. So we're going to go ahead and put it up in our grinder and we'll show you that process. So now we're going to run this through our butcher boy grinder. We have a coarse plate. Um, we're going to go through the coarse plate into our finer 1 8 inch plate, our mixer grinder. And from there, we'll bulk it out into some nice ground lamb. Check it out. So as you can see, we have a coarse ground lamb. This is a mixer grinder, so it's gonna mix that fat that we have in there real nice. Um, and then at this point, we're gonna run it through that 1 8 inch plate, out through our bulker, and onto our tray.
So there you have 12 beautiful one pound packs of ground lamb. It's mixed in very nice. You can see the fat that's in there is mixed very well. Very, very nice for the display case. So let's go ahead and add this to our pile over here. Finished product, we went over the lamb, all the different lamb cuts, the hind, the shoulder, the loin, the saddle part portion. And you can see I went ahead and added the ground lamb to our pile here. So this is what you would expect off of one whole lamb. This one weighed 57 pounds hanging weight, which uh, put it somewhere right around the mid 90s as a live weight, maybe 100 pound lamb. What we're left here, um, finished weight, I suspect we're somewhere in the 35 to 40 pound range. We have 12 pounds of, of ground lamb. I didn't weigh all these cuts, but um, we're gonna be somewhere in that, in that range of about a 65 to 70% yield. Um, finished weight on the table, ready to display and sell to our customer. This is a local lamb harvested right here on site, raised by family. We handled the whole process start to finish, USDA inspected. We dried it in our cooler. Now we cut it, now it's ready for the case. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more, and don't forget to subscribe to The Beard Butchers on YouTube. Thanks for following along.